Let the bass kick. And we're live. Started. Totally live. What up? What up? What up, everybody? This is the Music City Disc Golf Podcast, episode 79, live. I'm Will, and the guy making all the noise with his body uh-huh. camera is Jay Skinner. What, 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 what up? Yeah, it is. How Monday. are you guys? How are you, Will? I've missed you. I've missed you I feel too. Like it's been buddy. a long time. Uh, Sorry, it, I'm searching for something around my home. I can't, I can't really see you because I can't find my glasses. Oh no! But I'll find them here in a second. I've, I've got my broken pair here that I broke at work the other day, and and disc golf engineered it back to normal. Disc golf ingenuity at its finest. Yeah, just tape. <laughs> just put some blow tape on it and get out of here. So, yeah, may the 4th be with you guys. Uh, we got a great show for you tonight. We're going to talk to Doug Bierkus about uh, the virtual Glass Blown Open that just went down over the last week. Lots of cool, fun uh, festivities and things, cash and prizes. My cat's knocking stuff over just as soon as we go live. This is going to be fun. Um, yeah, but real quick, uh, some good news. Disc golf is happening again, and we have got uh, the skinny if you will, on what events are coming back, when they're coming back, what the ace pots are looking like, all the most recent information available to us. So without further ado, because I believe Doug is going to be joining us right around 7 o'clock, I am going to break right into the weekly bricky, bricky, brick, break down, 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 down. And that's going to start where we usually start on Saturday. So the Saturday shuffle is looking at a comeback of May 16th, tentatively. This, uh, that is, it could be subject to change, but as of right now, Zach Evans is looking at bringing back the Saturday shuffle on May 16th. And found him. Also on Saturday, nice. Also on Saturdays, uh, we've got... Afternoon doubles at Seven Oaks, two o'clock with John Williams. That's looking at a tentative comeback date of May twenty third. So put this on your calendars, but stay tuned to the Facebook pages for uh, updates on this because, like I said, subject to change. Uh, but moving into Sunday, Sunday singles with Q Tip is looking at a May twenty fourth comeback. Date. What was that? I'm gonna go ahead and yeah, mute tell her. She knows. Jay she saw the back then. All right. Blessed silence. <laughs> yes. So, uh, Sunday singles with Q-tips, with Q-tip looking at coming back on May 24th. And two seconds, Will. Sorry, buddy. Keep going with the breakdown. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. Uh, then also on Sunday afternoons, we've got, uh, Cane Ridge doubles. Now, Cane Ridge is part of the canon of Music City Disc Golf Weekly events that the club board members actually run. And we are coming back with our scheduled events on June 1st, as of June 1st. So, that being said, June 7th is event five in the Bag Tag series at Cedar Hill, and we're keeping that on the schedule. So, Cane Ridge doubles will probably not play that day, but will probably start back up on June 14th, the following Sunday. So, stay tuned for details on that. Uh, Monday, uh, Squamchers Ferry Doubles at Sanders Ferry Park in Hendersonville is looking at coming back next Monday on May 11th, but they're going to temporarily be switching formats to singles. That will make it a little bit easier to get everybody out there playing, but still be able to adhere to social distancing guidelines and keep from having everybody gathered in one place at one time. So, Squamchers Ferry Doubles. Temporarily going to be changing to singles, but coming back next Monday, the 11th. On Tuesdays, we've got Seven Oaks Doubles coming back on May 19th. And I talked to Griff today, and he's planning on keeping that in a doubles format, but he will be implementing social distancing uh, guidelines. So we're toying with ideas on how 
That's going to work for uh, pairing people up and random draw doubles, but he's looking at using some sort of a random uh, generator. So the details are still in the works, but we are still planning on bringing back Tuesday afternoon doubles at Seven Oaks with Griff on May 19th. Also on Tuesdays, Triple Creek Dubs is already back. They'll be out there tomorrow at Triple Creek Park in Gallatin, and the Ace Pot is at $250. So get you some money. Get you some money. And also on, well, moving into Wednesday, we've got the Wednesday night tag extravaganza. And that is going to be coming back on June 3rd, Wednesday, June 3rd. Cedar Hill doubles with Billy Fowler, uh, I believe is going to be coming back. I hear through the grapevine. I haven't talked to the man himself, but I believe it's going to be coming back on May 13th next week. Because I did talk to Lance Kirby and he said that White House doubles is coming back next Thursday on the 14th. So stay tuned for posts from Lance uh, and the Cedar Hill crew about exactly what to expect social distancing wise. But these events are coming back next week. And then Friday, we've got a new weekly uh, kicking off, actually the weekend kickoff with Jordan Webster on Friday evenings around 5 o'clock. And for the month of May, he's going to be at Two Rivers. Once the Two Rivers bag tags uh, start back up, that event will be moving on to Shelby for a, a run there. So that's your update on the weekly breakdown, guys. And lots of fun stuff. Like I said in previous episodes and uh and updates we are going to be coming back on june 1st and that means that all the events that we had on the schedule for the rest of the year are going to be keeping the same dates but just some things are going to be changing uh the sanctioned events our c tiers and stuff will be going to probably a a t format with t times so so that we can keep everybody from gathering in one place and so on and so forth did you guys lose power last night Oh, dude, we lost power till like one o'clock or so, and then we played uh, uh, Taboo. Me, me, Ashley, Brianna, and Jeremy. Yeah, Ashley's saying she's it's not on there. Thumbs up, it's not on there. Well, that's super weird. Yeah, I thought so. Sounds weird. He want to kill it and then just redo it? No, I mean we're. I guess we're gonna we're gonna have to, I guess. Well, we can do the breakdown later, I guess. We're gonna get Doug on at seven. Hey, baby. You say hi to Uncle Will. Give me that. Say hi, Uncle Will. Hi, Edwin. She just got done eating, so she had her some cheesy shells, some mac and cheeses. But she is teeth and hardcore on those back bottom teeth. So she has been real on recuss today. Hi. Hi. Look. Hi. Can you say car? Car. Car. Can you say will? Can you say will? Uh, hey, Adwin. That's Will. Yeah, you know who Will is. Cool. So she hasn't seen him in a while, but I know who he is. He's a that bearded guy. Always comes over and gives me hugs. Uh, yeah. yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> She's like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He always comes over and gives you hugs. Uh huh. Oh, you're a daddy's girl. You're an up and down, squirm around daddy's girl, but you, but you're daddy's girl. I think I figured it out, Jay. <laughs> uh oh, what happened? You oh, didn't I hit just the record button. I didn't. The one extra button I didn't hit. So everybody missed the. Uh, everybody missed the weekly breakdown, but we uh, we're back. <laughs> and our our wonderful banter. Um, beforehand, you missed all that. And my, so I, get, I, I walked around the house aimlessly looking for things. My y'all got to get motion sick, so that didn't happen either. Oh, Will, you're gone. No, I'm here. Doug, oh, there you are. Doug's, Doug's jumping gone. in. Doug. Doug is in the middle of jumping in. Oh, she's flexing for you, Will. Ah. Tell him. What He's up, telling. Doug? How goes it? It's going well, man. I'm. Uh, hey, Doug. How are you, bud? Good. I figured. Yeah, he got your hands full, though. Yes, he yeah, does. Yeah, <laughs> always. 
Yeah, I'm uh, I'm just learning how to do this live streaming thing and I I just figured out a catastrophic Ooh. error I was making literally seconds before you joined us. So welcome Ooh. and how's everything in Emporia? <laughs> it's good. I know I'm a little early. If uh, you guys have stuff to finish up, I am more than happy to wait patiently. No, sir. We well, we finished the first segment sort of that finished. we planned on doing, but uh, I wasn't streaming it live. So now everybody's just joining us as we've got you on the air. So that's it's oh, perfect. awesome. Couldn't have worked out better. The uh, the other stuff is just boring updates that we can put in in post, and we'll post it on the YouTube channel. So all good. All right. <laughs> So, uh, everybody I'm sure knows who this gentleman is, and he probably needs no introduction, but um, I wanted to say first, thank you, I just received my TD pack in the mail, and um, it was kind of bittersweet opening it, because obviously, major bummer that we all weren't able to come to Emporia and gather together, but uh, you and Rusko and Eric and all the folks in Emporia, in your infinite wisdom... Came up with a way to lift our spirits and empty our wallets over the last week. So um, the virtual GBO looked like it was a smashing success. Tell us a little bit about how that idea came about and what the process was to get that started. Well, I tell you, it was uh, kind of interesting. Um, I was actually in my office and uh, Bobby Brown came to talk to me and he said, Hey, I saw this deal about Burning Man. Burning Man is a huge festival in Arizona, and uh, he said they, since they were canceling it, they were going to try to do a virtual Burning Man, and they made it very clear at the beginning that it was going to be messy, it was going to be sloppy, and they weren't quite sure how it was going to work, but that he wanted to try that for the GBO. So we brainstormed for a little while, we started a document, we shared some different ideas that we thought we could do virtually, and... Uh, uh, Bobby Brown was definitely the brains behind the operation, and uh, it turned out to be a week of a lot of interaction where folks were able to connect a little bit and stay connected to the GBO, even though the actual GBO was not going on. So as far as all the ancillary activities, because I know the competition element of the Glass Blown Open took place in Disc Golf Valley, and uh, the functionality of that has grown by leaps and bounds over the last year or so. So how, before we get into the, like all the extra bells and whistles of the GBO that you were able to do online, uh, how did that all play out for you? Was, were there any major hiccups? Did, did everything kind of run pretty smoothly and how was it on the back end, kind of administrating all the scoring and everything? Um, I, I don't know all of the details behind the scoring. I know that the, 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 the guy, I think his name is Brandon um, up in Canada, who is kind of the disc golf Valley the, the brains behind that operation. He worked real, real closely with Bobby. And uh, I know that he probably put in, I think Bobby said close to 25, 30 hours to make sure that everything went smooth. Um, and that uh, the people that wanted to log in and play were able to play and it tracks scores and all of that good stuff. So uh, I know that we, one of the nice things about this virtual GBO is in many, many cases, we were able to hand things over to people that would have been involved anyways. Now we weren't going to get Golf Valley involved with the actual GBO, but uh, um, things like Disc Golf Strong or the Eagles, <laughs> Wing, the Eagles Wings Chapel Service or, you know, and anything along those lines, those guys, those guys actually took care of what they needed to do and we just made it part of the GBO. Awesome. So um, I know that most of, like, you had the fly party, everybody was doing, uh, just, like, vending, um, I didn't see anything about the poker party. Was that one that wasn't able to be salvaged in a virtual format? Yeah, it wasn't. And the, the poker party, I mean, the, the, the bottom line is there's a lot of laws about poker. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> even when we do our poker party in, in Emporia, your, your $10 is for food. That's what we always tell people. And then we just have some prizes to give away. So we did look at a couple different card uh, platforms that you could use. And it just got a little too complicated, a little too pricey. And then if if we were going to play for something, we'd have to somehow skirt around the the, the, the legality of, of playing online poker for money. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. Did uh, Only a few states have it lucky. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I'm curious to to know because I tried. I I really did. I've messed around with Disc Golf Valley a little bit, and I'm terrible at it. I still only have a dagger, <laughs> and I think yeah, the furthest I've thrown it is probably 200 feet, extremely downhill. Um, I do you know like 
I'm trying to get to the heart of what I am ultimately trying to ask. Was there was was there any kind of prizing involved in like for the winners of the of the there there, there was. We actually had some great prizes. I know that there was uh in fact one of the prizes was that brand new and I'm awful at the names of some of our products, but the Latitude has recently come out with a really, really nice top end bag. And the that core particular pro bag. Yeah, the, the, yes. And that that there were a couple of those that were given away. And then little did we know that there'd be such a uh, such a fascination with all of the different discs in the player pack. And we had some of the uh, the player pack discs also pulled aside for for prizes that some people appreciated. So, um, yeah, Bobby had a structure where I think I think first through fourth at the end of the day, all got some cool prizes from that disc golf valley, uh, you know, video game disc golf tournament. Yeah. You talk about the, your disc and your, your player's pack disc. I know that y'all print up a lot of special edition discs for the GBO because I've, I've been there a couple of years ago with Will, and I got some of those. And I'm curious, did you already have those printed up and made, and you are going to get rid of them or no? Or what was going on with we, that? Well, we, we did. Um, and sometimes I think maybe I planned too far in advance because <laughs> it uh, well. ended up getting us burned. But, you know, some of the discs we get, when we get, when we get over 1,000 of a disc, we tend to have it hot stamped in Sweden. And yeah. uh, in order to get that cycle going, you got to start pretty early and then to get it on a container on the water to get across to America and then get it received and all of that stuff takes quite a bit of time. Now we, we can do things on shorter turnarounds if we air freight stuff over, but you know, with, with running a tournament, we are trying to watch every dollar we spend this. So absolutely in front of that uh, makes a lot of sense. But the the uh, El Juez, which was the uh, orange-scented prime putter that had uh, Judge in Spanish as well as uh, Disco's How about, diameters. Did you say orange-scented, like it smells like an orange? Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's new to me, but okay. Yeah, that, that orange-scented uh, uh, orange burst putter um, was uh, done because uh, this year, in fact, this past Saturday, uh, not only would our block party be going on downtown, but the Hispanics of today and tomorrow would be doing their uh, Cinco de Mayo celebration. And we were going to combine hmm. the two events and have some fun with it. And it was going to be probably the biggest block party that we've ever had with the combination yeah. of the two events, a lot of locals coming out. And to kind of celebrate that, we, we came up with that kind of Spanish-themed uh, judge or the El Juez and uh, that that was one that we had done in Sweden. Um, and the, I stamp my own discs. We always get those blank. And one of the big draws or one of the big exciting things for both pros and ams at the GBO is that they get a little voucher where they can come to our distribution center and stamp their own disc. And uh, so we did. We had those all in house, but we kind of played around with what we might put on those discs. And if you happen to see the stamp, it it actually says I should have stamped this disc and then it has the GBO logo with, with cancel uh, over top of it. Um, so those we had done earlier, uh, the Northmen and the core, the, from latitude and West side, those things were already in production on their way over. We had, uh, we did something kind of different in the player pack. We took all of the discs that we would have used during the week that weren't in the actual player pack and did mystery boxes and sent two of those to everybody. So whether those were, I won my card discs, all of those we had done before it was canceled. Um, we give an I won my card prize to every amateur card throughout the week. Um, we had eight discs for a uh, ACE challenge event that we were going to do out at the bonfire where four different people were going to win a thousand bucks. We had all those discs printed. Um, Casa Ramos, a really nice uh, Mexican restaurant in town, had 60 special GBO 2020 discs uh, made. And in fact, the day, I was going to deliver them to them and say thank you for selling these discs in your store and making us even more of a disc golf t town. Um, we canceled it that day, so uh. a little tough to a little tough to say hey, you still need to pay for these discs. But uh, uh, so we had those. We had um, uh, the, there's special discs that are that are for the poker party, special discs for the beer fest, just tons of discs that. Uh, are used throughout the week. And it was kind of cool because we, we almost treated it like, uh, I don't know, like baseball cards where you, there's an odd, there's a, there's a, what's the word for it? There's a chance that you'll get a certain card in a pack. Sure. Like it might be one out of four packs. You get one of these one out of eight. packs. Okay. You get one of these. 
So we did that with every single uh, of those 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 discs that were prepared for the event, and uh, and that looks like it might be some good whiskey. <laughs> that is uh, Templeton Rye Four Year, right. and uh, not bad. It, you, I believe that uh, you know it's it's a very good it's very good uh, whiskey. I prefer, excuse me, prefer rye whiskeys. So if you're a fan, I'll have to bring you a bottle sometime. I don't know if you can get it there in Kansas, but yeah. Hey, one of my favorite ryes is actually from right there in Nashville, and. Uh, I know the next time I'm there, hopefully the distillery will be open for a tour. Apparently, it's it? which one old, is that one? It's apparently Davis in a reserve. No, it's in old church building, and it's Bob Dylan's <laughs> uh, place. I think uh, Heaven's Door is okay. Uh, I'll have to look here. that up. And they've got a, a great, great rye whiskey. It's a little. It's okay. about eighty-five bucks, I think, for a bottle, which gets towards my top end of what I'd like to pay. But uh, understood. Sure. but still good stuff so anyways but i will uh, definitely I'll, I'll look into it i, I yeah. was curious to know with the with the the horrible cancellation of the gbo and many other events what's the mood been like there around the store y'all been trying to keep it light and fun are y'all i mean is everybody down is it is it just been kind of a big disappointment what's been going on there with you with you guys well, at the, at the well, distribution center 100 percent big disappointment from the Absolutely. day it got canceled until this week when we had the most beautiful weather we would have ever had for a GBO, which made it even worse. Uh, yeah. Um, how, however, with that being said, we have seen one of the strangest, never in my wildest dreams would I have ever thought that our sales would be doing as well as they are right now. And that's both <laughs> just our online sales at the retail store. And then of course we do a great deal of work on a, a great deal of business on Amazon. And I sure. think what's happening is that uh, people are looking for things to do. And even though the PDGA may, you know, may have made a statement about, Hey, let's stay off of disc golf course courses. You know, I know <laughs> here in Emporia every, you know, I drive, we ride by the, any of our parks and there are, foursomes and fivesomes playing all over the course and it's a great yeah, way to get out Nash nashville missed that memo too at times unfortunately we've had some we've had some guys not being courteous but what can you do yeah the the mop golf is what we need to avoid as a disc golf community mm -hmm. is you know if someone sure. sees 12 people playing wolf out on a disc golf course and they call the city you know that's that's in violation of probably what uh, what the numbers are that people should be uh hanging out with so sure. And well, you're probably in the same boat. You're probably yeah, in the same so, boat with us. They've threatened to pull baskets, and most of those baskets they're not provided by Metro. Those were either donated or the club bought them, or individual people have bought those baskets. So when yeah. they were talking about possibly pulling baskets, we're like, "Well, those are people's property. Can you can they do that?" But yeah. you know, if it's a public park, so I guess they can. Yeah, they they can. I just just golfers. Just I've 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 been around the sport for twenty five plus years, and. Uh, we, we just have to make smart decisions as a, as a community. If we make smart decisions, we keep ourselves out of, out of a lot of trouble. But uh, to finish sure. up the answer to your question, though, we're doing fine at Dynamic Discs. Uh, we've been busy. Um, everyone's kind of bummed out. And then, of course, Junior Worlds got canceled. And that, that was the big event we were working towards in July. So, um, sure. you know, when there's a lot of uncertainty, I think I think there's specifically from an event standpoint, you know, we, we don't know if we'll do Junior Worlds again next year or the following year. So we did mm -hmm. it in 18 and 19. Sure. We were supposed to do it this year in 20. We might get it in 21, but we might also get our redo in 22. And then, of course, we were awarded the Professional World Disc Golf Championships uh, in 2021. Yeah. And depending on what the folks in uh, Utah can do for their, their event, it's been postponed and not canceled. If they're able to reschedule something later in the year, we'll likely be doing Pro Worlds in 2021. Um, but if they can't, that will likely get bumped too. So it's just kind of as an event coordinator and somebody that is uh, taking care of all of our events, one of the one of the things I love is to yeah. have a date on the calendar. And unfortunately, we sure. just don't have a lot of dates on the calendar right now. I don't know about you, Will. I feel like this is the less stress I've been in three years of being on the board. The last nothing going on. The last month or so weird. has been pretty decent. It's starting to pick back up, and it's just a lot of work to yeah. do right now to get prepared to get back to the swing of things. But um, Doug, before we get too far ahead, uh, remind me at some point off the air. Let me give you a little bit of an update because I have been talking to the folks at the PDGA, and they'll be making an an, yeah. uh, an update over or announcement over the next week or so. But um, there's some things that yeah, I can we'll, fill you in on. But we'll speak. Um, get it in. 
Yes. Break it down for him later. You mentioned uh, Casa Ramos, and uh, you know, I know that the Glass Blown Open is one of the really the only two big th- uh, events that come through Emporia every year. And I know the city has gotten to a point where they really depend on the economic boost from the GBO. So are there any, I mean, how, how much of a hit are the, the other businesses there in Emporia taking because of all this? You know, it's, it's tough. Uh, we're the, the, uh, I think we'll really see what the, what the effect or the impact of all of this is here in the next two or three months, because as uh, governor Kelly here, uh, started the reopening uh, phased plan. It actually started uh, today. Um, we're going to see different businesses start to open up. Um, I know a lot of the businesses, when I told them we were canceling GBO, they were they were devastated because it's it's it, and you know it's funny you don't it doesn't sink in as much until it's kind of taken away. But you know I've had people tell me, oh GBO is our best week. It's our best week all year, et cetera, et cetera. And this comes not just from the usual suspects, the, the, the bars and the restaurants and the, the, sure. the hotels, but some of our other businesses that you'd never think, you know, are, are gas stations. Gas I mean, stations. That's right. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's funny, a little story. A couple of years ago, I was talking to a florist and I said, really? you, might be, you might be one of the few businesses in Emporia that probably doesn't get a lot of business benefit from disc golf during gbo and they said no we love the gbo we usually have about a dozen people that uh, stay in airbnbs and before they leave town they order flowers to send to the folks that they uh that they uh, rented the house from and I, little things like that you just don't think about but all of that adds up yeah the, the state of Kansas well, you know, said, go ahead what were you saying doug oh uh, the, the, the state of Kansas uh, actually sent me a survey to find out what the economic impact of the GBO would have been this year. And it was uh, about two and a half million dollars is what the glass blown open uh, that that it has that impact on the community. So when we get 2000, 2500 disc golf players, fans, families come to town, there's about two and a half million dollars that is spent in this community. And that, uh, when you have a town that's two hundred twenty-five thousand people, um, that that's a big impact. So we have a big bike race too. That's been now it hasn't been canceled. It should have been the first weekend in June, and I know it's been pushed to September. We'll see if that goes on. But uh, yeah, this this thing is this thing is tough. I mean, it's there's yeah. two two words that start with P. One's pandemic, and one's poverty, and uh, the two uh, definitely work closely together. And I, I hope it doesn't have as bad of an impact as, as it could. But I also know this Emporians are strong, they're resilient, and uh, we will come back from all of this. Um, that's wonderful words. And I think that I'm from a very small town as well, actually like 3000 people in the town of Greenwood, Arkansas. And um, so I can imagine the, the, the economic impact for those businesses, especially, and I was talking to Will about this, is they may have gotten lucky and not ordered for that week yet, but they have to definitely prepare for that week. And those orders have to go be in at certain times to be able to get food for enough to feed for a GBO crowd for a week. You know, yep. so it, I was talking to him. I was like, that could just be sitting there if they've already made preparations or already had that in, you know, waiting for these guys to come, you know, show up. So it's the economic impact. I imagine like, like you were saying is way more felt by like, than we could ever possibly know. Yep. I'm sure taking a loss from the cancellation of the GBO is, I mean, was unavoidable. Um, Was, were all the virtual GBO uh, activities able to put a dent in that and kind of, I don't know, keep you guys from going too far into the red? I know there were a lot of sales from all your different vendors and stuff. We, the, the virtual GBO was good. Not it was good for us, but more importantly, it was good for a lot of our touring pros and people that we're connected to. Um, uh, we have we have touring pros where the Glass Blown Open Block Party is it it's a huge percentage of what they sell over the course of a year. I mean, if you think about it, the GBO Block Party is is pretty special because we have almost forty disc golf vendors that set up, and they're not allowed to sell stock stamps of any discs. So if you think about that, um, people just 
I can't wait to get to the block party to see what all the goodies are and the new discs and the fundraiser discs. And there's always just special discs galore. And when you have folks like Eric and Tina or my daughter Paige or, you know, Chris Clemens, it's, it's an opportunity for them to really help support their tour by selling a bunch of discs at that block party. So the virtual block party definitely helped them. I know I talked to my daughter and she had a really, the half hour she was on virtually was, was really good for her. And, uh, I, I know that, uh, the other folks that took part in that, that was beneficial and that did help. Um, all the other stuff though, we really wasn't to generate money. You didn't, you know, uh, you, you know, it was just to kind of create some sort of community where people could tune in and see that the GBO brand and that the, the fact that we, like to think we're one of the better disc golf tournaments on the calendar each year that that we weren't just going to die this year we were going to do something and uh um but it really I don't think didn't anybody have a, would doubt that yeah and it really didn't I'll have question that right yeah it did not have an impact on on the bottom line i mean we we uh uh yeah it 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 it, it was not a financially it was not good that the gbo was canceled let's just put it that way oh yeah i can imagine i mean i uh, yeah, absolutely can imagine. The news well, came really close to the tournament too, and I'm sure that just about uh, probably 100 percent of everything that you, knowing how you prepare for things like that, I mean, I'm sure you, just about everything you needed for the event had already been purchased and was not uh, eligible for any kind of refund. Um, yeah, we, although although we we got, I, I was happy with a lot of the outcomes, not all of the outcomes, and uh, you know, one thing that. One thing I learned uh, through this whole process is people are a lot. If 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 they want to fight you on the refund policy, and you say, "Well, I tell you what, what if you keep the money but you put it towards next year?" That that worked out quite a few times in our favor. So it's where we lost the money, but we'll we'll get it back in recoup year. it. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's not a bad idea. I mean, I don't, I don't know what off the top of my head, and of course we have an officer for this, but. It's not a bad idea. Well, we should probably keep that in mind for anything like this comes <laughs> yeah. up where it actually did do to us something like that. Like, yeah. We got kind of lucky, and I'll be completely honest. We got really lucky that we were in the spot and the time frame that we were in when this happened up front yeah. because it, it saved our rear ends for sure. And, yeah. and, of course, you know, with the national tour finale, there was a lot of planning going on for that. And so yep. it, we definitely it, got saved. It's, it's, it's rough, and, you know, a lot of people – you know, we did we did get a lot of heat over the you know the, the PDGA, you know, came up with the emergency refund policy where an event could mm -hmm. could ship player packs instead of making full refunds of entry fees, and that that was a painful process to go through, especially for some folks that that you know maybe didn't quite understand the situation we were in. I to, to put it into perspective, and and you guys have run big events, but for us to have refunded the entire amateur side of the GBO yeah. would have cost us over one hundred and ninety thousand dollars. Oh, uh, and, I can imagine. And and the, the 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 trouble is is that and and a lot of people may not be aware of this, but as soon as a tournament starts collecting entry fees, they're spending money. I mean, that's yeah, that's how you, that's how you run a tournament. And and never, never have I have I ever been involved in an event where it was, it was canceled. Now I've had events where the weather was so bad, a round might be cut or, you know, Hey, we'll come out tomorrow. But when you're talking about 90 people at a local event, it's a little easier to be flexible when you're talking about, you know, 1500 plus players, 2,500 guests here in town, mm -hmm. nine different courses. You know, you, you just can't, you just can't say, Oh can't yeah, let's that. bump it a couple of weeks. Um, but uh, yeah, I, it, it it um yeah the, the the whole player pack thing that that was tough but uh it seems that uh most people there's still some folks you're always going to get people that complain you guys know that as tds but uh oh, most well, people yeah, seem yeah. to be pretty happy with the uh, the boxes they they got and will i'm glad you got yours did you like that uh rock and roll concert t-shirt type deal oh it's awesome man i've never I, i've You're i'm not sharing the goodies will what's going on here bud those they're mines <laughs> they're all mines uh, no i've never seen a shirt like that come out Judge. of tournament <clears throat> before and it uh it's really awesome and you guys always i mean your players packs are always huge with incredible value and you always come up with cool unique ideas on, on stuff that you can throw into it and 
it's always something that generates a lot of excitement. And um, I know that while I can't even imagine how drastically the wind must have just come out of everybody's sails when the PDJ made say when. that announcement. Uh, yeah, yeah, that <laughs> announcement. But um, one thing, I mean, there's been some a lot of silver linings, depending on how hard you have to look to find them. But I I know that one of the things that I've that I and many people appreciate about dynamic discs is how, uh, how well you guys present your, your team players and, uh, your, your RV drivers and all that stuff and, and how accessible everybody is and how relatable everybody is it, just by being visible on social media all the time. And this all, this kind of played into that and expanded it in a way because, we got to kind of go into the living rooms of all your of all the DD team pros and with Tyler Searle and with J Ray and with Steve O and everybody, you know, it was like, we were all able to interact in a really personal way, even though we were separated by miles, you know, thanks to the, the miracle of technology. And yep. it was, well, not only that, but dynamic, like embrace of technology and social media. And I, and I know me and you've had this conversation many times, but they are literally the, the leaders of doing that. Yeah. Like you guys have really capitalized on that and really seen, have really seen the value in that. And now I see a lot of other companies following too. So I, I brag on you guys all the time for that because Bob Bobby far, does a wonderful job. The best job of doing <laughs> yep. so. and, and that's huge. Yeah. And it was just really cool to, uh, I don't know. I definitely felt, not so cut off from the rest of the world over the last yeah. week, especially on we top get too of the far bummer off. of being uh, not in Emporia. Sorry. But. Yep. Sorry, Will. I just wanted to make sure that Doug knows that if they've got goodies left over and they want to send them for us to unload to other people, judges, <clears throat> judges, we'll get, we'll do that for you. We'll just, hey, you, I, just tell you now. I, I can, uh, I can appreciate someone that likes the judge. <laughs> oh yeah. Will gives me crap all the time because he likes to use its little sister. <laughs> team warden baby team yeah. warden so here's here's the 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 deal on that is um how are you are you a warden guy will mm -hmm. he is he very is. much so yeah what's your rating <laughs> well uh i'm like a like an 830 rated disc golfer but uh like a thousand rated td so, true that. I, so you you are you are in my boat, <laughs> which means that if you started putting with a judge, I bet you'd get up to at least eight seventy. <laughs> Doug, you know I've been telling him that for years. I give Jay it's a hard time. Funny when he puts with my disc, they go in. I give Jay a hard time because he will only use the classic hard judges, and me, yeah, I'm a, I'm a classic blend guy, and anything else just feels out of place in my. I hand. like the blends, but I like to throw them off the tee pad for shorter shots. So every time I yep. go to Emporia without him, he always like bring me back ten classic hard judges, and I'll oh, always this bring dude him back right ten here. classic blends. This judges. guy. <laughs> I'll literally see what I can find. I, I'll yeah. see what I can find for you. <laughs> he literally came back from GBO last year, and I'd handed him a big stack of money to get me a bunch of judges. And he comes back, and he's got a stack of blends. Like he hid, he hid the ones he bought for me away, but he hands me the stack of blends, and I'm like, "Are you kidding me, Will?" And then last year <laughs> I did a different kept one. Going for a while. Last year I pulled yeah. a, another maneuver. I did get him his classic hard uh, judges, but I got the stack and I put one classic blend on top when I gave it to him. So nice. He, he was able to give me a mouthful right before he realized that all right. hope was yeah. not you lost. Know? Yeah. You know, if you really want to get them, you need to throw a classic super soft on the top of the hole. Oh, oh man. Or just Dude, throw it at his head. Like old school blow flies. <laughs> yeah. Those things are, are, are definitely wobbly, flimsy. They're kind of neat, though. They're fun to mess around with. Yeah. I, I carry a super soft judge. I put with classic soft judges, and then I have a couple fusion judges that I drive with. And uh, okay. each of the, that classic soft, the, the, the super soft judge is probably the most reliable slow anheuser disc i've ever had really it's those soft those super soft discs now i know that's yeah. kind of i think it's been discontinued but uh man if you really if you really stand on it it'll it'll it'll, it'll turn nice really and slow for you so i've got a couple that are in the bin that i've got when they first were around to give them a little test so i'll have to break them back out i guess yeah take them and really 
stand on them, like get on a tee okay. box and throw them hard and, and okay. notice how, what a nice turn it is. And then if it does get a little too angled, that super soft stuff, it almost hits the ground like an eraser as opposed to cut rolling, which is kind of nice too. So, okay. Look at but, this. Uh, I'm getting advice all over the place. Tonight. I have seen them do oh, the yeah. opposite, though, where you'll catch like a nub or something and the and then will bounce. fall on its edge and kind of flex like that and then stand back up and roll. And hop. <laughs> yeah. I've had a few of those. Yeah. So, yeah, you mentioned that, uh, you know, uh, GBO wasn't the only thing to get the rug pulled out from under it. Junior Worlds also. Um, the next well, installment of Sailing the Seas with Dynamic Discs. I I, I saw Tyler uh, had to pull the, the ripcord on that one also. Um, but you guys do have something exciting coming up uh, at one of the courses that Eric McCabe has recently designed in Alaska called Meyer Lake. Um, tell whoa. us a little bit about that because I know wait. that that's kind of the great white hope for uh, for disc golf and traveling right now. Yeah, we're, and you know, that's up in the air too. Uh, we don't know. Um, we don't, I, we're, we're not willing to pull the plug on it yet. That's for sure. Um, yeah, McCabe designed a beautiful championship level course in Wasilla, Alaska, which is about 45 minutes from Anchorage um, at a beautiful resort, uh, heavily wooded course, spectacular views. Just imagine Alaska. That's what you're going to get. And uh, we, uh, we are, uh, at this point, planning on a B tier up there called the Meyer Lake Classic. I believe it's on the 18th and 19th of July. Um, but what's even more exciting than that, in my my opinion, is a C tier on Friday night that will start at 10 p.m. So on Friday night, there'll be a C tier at 10 p.m. and we'll finish at 1 a.m. Uh, the next hmm. day. So it'll be a sanctioned event that starts one day, just a one round event that starts one day, finishes the next day. You're playing a sanctioned event at midnight. The sun never goes down that type time of the year. Um, and then the next day, people are like, well, Saturday, the, the, the B tier starts two rounds or a round on Saturday, a round on Sunday. How are you going to make that work? Well, because it stays dark so much, the first tea time will be noon. So uh, <laughs> that's kind of a cool deal, too, that uh, first tea time on Saturday and Sunday will be at noon. And we got some clinics scheduled with both Paige uh, Shu as well as uh, Eric McCabe and uh, – um, awesome. I would think in the next couple of weeks, we'll figure out whether, whether that's going to actually happen or not. Um, sure. kind of, uh, have some guarded optimism about that. Sure. So how, how hard was it to get used to stay in page two? Well, it's, uh, for her sake, <laughs> she doesn't have to tell people it's not the jerk ass anymore, but, uh, <laughs> <I'm a jerk>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. or, or the real rocket scientists that think the B is silent and then it's just jerk ass. So you yeah. get that a lot too. I, this is a family show though, isn't it? Will? I no, that. no. You get a we, pass, we lost Doug. that when Logan pass. Bowers and Ryan Telly came on the show. We, we yeah. lost the family rating. So. <laughs> It's it's tough, but we, we love Grady. Grady's a good guy. In fact, they've been here in Emporia for the last couple of months, and uh, um, they're they're happy. And uh, uh, That's awesome. yeah, it is it is it is different. I sometimes catch myself um, uh, when I go to my phone contacts, going to the B's instead of the S's when I'm trying to reach her. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, yeah, it's it's definitely different. She lost some letters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, opposite of but my wife. <laughs> it's like the same. It's like what a what a year she did have, like a, a world championship, and then getting married. What's that like for you? What's that been like for you? It was. Uh, oh, it, go ahead. Just a heads up: if we lose power or connectivity, we're we're getting smacked by a lot of storms. Will you're about two minutes away from getting hit because it just hit at the house. I hear it. It's rumbling, but yeah. I'm, so just I'm, in case if faith. we lose anything, that's what happened. Probably Sorry. God going after the warden throwers. Anyhow. <laughs> no. Cold blooded right there. Leave my my friend. wardens alone. I like it. Yeah. No. Just uh hey, uh the the yeah, it was it was an interesting couple of years. I mean, eighteen, the world championships, that was surreal to us. I still when I see a video of it or a picture of it or I see a a disc that commemorates her winning the world championship, it was just it was just you can't describe it. I mean, my I wife and imagine. I have uh, been taking her to disc golf courses since she was about 10 and uh, our whole family. And 
to see her reach the top of the sport was just fantastic. Um, and then to start the next year out with uh, the win at Vegas. Uh, yeah, the, that was that a was great pretty, win. pretty exciting. And then, of course, they started sure. thinking about the wedding, and then they had some issues with their van. And uh, yeah, it, it was a kind of an up-and-down year last year, but culminating with the wedding in October, um, that was a really special day and uh, uh, another memory that will be burned into my brain for a long time. Sure. And uh, um but she's she's excited and you know kind of itching to get back out there because her year started out fairly good i think she had a I, I, I she cast at both events i think she was on the lead card in vegas and waco was not her best event but she did cash and uh um she's fired up to get back out there and start competing and uh it'll be cool to see how that works this year both for her and grady yeah did now for grady did you uh Take him by the arm and lead him out in the woods and show him some dad. Let him know what dad could be like. Well, you know, he, he uh, you know, I will tell you this, and and Grady make that get embarrassed uh, if, by me telling the story. <laughs> but when he he came, and and I know this is a tradition that isn't probably as practiced as it as it was back in my day, but uh, uh, the way he asked us if it was okay to marry her sold the deal for me i mean he you go old school with it he went he went old school with it and that's awesome just uh just you you could tell and and you know if you have a um well you was that a son or a daughter that was hanging that out was a you? daughter yeah okay 17 your, months. Your first daughter first yes uh, you might want to start a gun collection but anyhow yeah uh, yeah uh that i can uh, do the the you'll see that your kids when they when they you know, they light up, they light up when they find the right person. And, uh, uh, Paige had, had dated some other people in the past and she seemed happy, but, uh, man with Grady, it was a whole nother level of just getting, she, she would light up and you could tell that, uh, they were made for each other. So we're real happy with that. Awesome. Well, good deal. Good deal. I'm glad when you're, when a, when a dad's happy and like I said, I'm beginning this journey, but when I'm happy when it was her, it, it's good. Yeah, so I can only imagine with you. Yeah, well, here, here, I'm going to give you a little pro tip on uh, when, sure. when about 15, 15, 16 years from now, when these boys start knocking on the door, you just, uh, you need to tell them, you know, say, hey, I love my daughter, and I will do anything to protect her, even if it means going back to prison. You yeah. tell them that, yeah. and uh, and uh, you know, they they start to start to shake a little bit. So yeah, I would definitely let them know that going back. I've been yeah. there once. We had yeah, a rash was... of baby uh, births here right yeah, around the did. same time that Adeline was born. Uh, our our previous club president, Alan Posey, had his son. And uh, our other co-host, Marcus Rogers, uh, also had uh, his child, uh, MJ. So now, you know, we get to have play dates and all of us can gather around them in a circle of protection, put our backs together and keep the wolves at bay. <laughs> This is this is a well, good good plan. Yeah, it's a I don't good know plan. If you notice this will, but I just uh, lost power. So the only light that I have here is a battery battery operated um, LED light here. Will so Doug, I don't mean to cut you guys off, but just to be because I got the little ones going, I'm gonna hop off of here and kind of calm some calm some nerves. All good, buddy. Oh, all right, guys. Doug, sorry I cut you short. Will, I love you. No. I'll holler at you guys later. Nashville Music City Disc Golf. Sorry, I gotta go tend to the children. Freeman. See ya. See ya, Jay. Love All right, guys. See ya. Love you. All right. Just the two of us. Just the two of us. Yeah. All right. Um. Well, hey, so for your listeners that don't know this, this guy that uh, is running this podcast right now was, uh, we were super excited to have him back TDing uh, Cottonwood Falls at the GBO. I don't know if they know that about you, but uh, we put together what I think is the absolute best team of tournament directors from all over the country and uh when will joined the squad last year uh very highly recommended uh you did not disappoint and i want to tell you one of the big misses when we canceled this is not getting able to see you in person and uh uh we'll look forward to having you back here next year though back out there at uh swope park in cottonwood falls doug i, I appreciate the kind words i, I can't tell you how much and i will be there as long as you will have me every year <laughs> i promise yeah. that is i mean it's a it's an honor for me to be a part of something like the glass blown open i mean um it's still kind of like baffling and 
uh, earth shaking to think about, you know, like five years ago when I ran my first tournament and then now being, uh, you know, a course director at, at the biggest tournament in the world, that's, you know, I feel like I've arrived <laughs> in a way, but, yeah. uh, I mean, it's just, I miss, I miss everything when I don't get to come to Emporia, man. It's not even just, uh, the tournament, it, obviously getting to see everybody, And, uh, you know, we touched on the impact that losing the GBO has on Emporia at large, but I look forward to going to Casa Ramos and Doobies and Radius and Commercial Street Diner and, you know, all those places just as much as any other part of it. And uh, it's, it's always been like, you know, the first or second thing that people mention when they talk about what makes the GBO great is just how, uh, how strongly the the city of Emporia embraces it and you know it's just it's a it's an atmosphere and a feeling that you you can't manufacture and you it doesn't come along every day you you can I I can remember my first GBO playing in it about oh wow 12 years ago maybe um and went into a Walmart with my buddy that I was traveling with in fact Paige was with us she was like 12 or 13 or something and uh no maybe it was she was like 10 or 11, uh, i forget but uh we went into the walmart and we had disc golf t-shirts on and i was checking out and the cashier at the walmart said you must be in town for the glass blown open <laughs> and i said yeah she said well i hope you have a great event are you going to be playing peter pan and i'm sitting there going in my 20 plus years at that point of going around playing tournaments when would you ever go into a business in a town where you were at the event and the cashier at Walmart would be asking you about what, what course you were going to play? And it, it gets repeated at the restaurants, at the bars, at the front desks of hotels. If you drive through town, it seems like every marquee you see says, welcome GBOers or welcome disc golfers. It, you, you hit the nail on the head. This town, this town has embraced an identity of being, I, I mean, we're not officially it, but arguably the disc golf capital of the world. I mean, you come to Emporia as a disc golfer and you're treated like royalty. It certainly feels that way. It's Mecca for sure. And, and those stories, you're right. They happen everywhere. I remember in 2018, uh, I played it and it was our, our, uh, Airbnb hosts. I'd, any one of us would come back from our round to get changed and take a shower and uh, relax a little bit. And they'd be out in the yard and asking us, you know, how our round went, where we played and all that. And it was, it's just staggering. I mean, like one of my favorite, uh, I'll give you two of my favorite GBO moments. Um, one was in 2018 and we were, uh, we had gotten in there a day early and we went out to Peter Pan for a practice round. And I remember, I forget what hole it was, uh, playing alongside the lake. Um, I believe it was on the, whatever, which hole is it where you're coming up and there's like the castle looking place with the stone rings around the yard. And then there's like a little bathhouse next to the lake. And there's a lot, usually a lot of people fishing on that side. Hole, hole seven, hole eight. Hole seven, yeah. hole eight. So we were walking up after our drives and there was a lady there on the lake with her kids fishing. And we were coming to walk up and our discs were laying fairly close to where they were at. And one of the kids went to run out in front of us and she stopped, she stopped him and said, no, no, let the disc golfers go first. And it, uh, I, I had the stupidest look on my face, I'm sure, because I was staring at him like one, they know what it, she knows what it is. And then two, like she's being considerate of it. And like, yeah. like that's something that does not happen in most places. I know Bowling Green Amateur Championships one year, we were at uh, Bowling Green Tech and we were coming up a real tight wooded fairway, long, straight, tight wooded fairway coming back towards campus. And there was some students just walking the fairway towards the tee pad. A big group of us just standing there in the fairway and not paying us any attention. We're waving and saying, hey, we're gonna, we're throwing towards you. And they actually like gave us some choice words like I don't give a like I mean, that yeah. that's the more common response to disc golf in my experience. Yeah. Well, what's, what's the other one? The other one is uh, last year we were wrapping up. I think it was Sunday morning and there's the gas station. That's kind of catty corner to the DC. And I had been going in and out of there all week. And so I'd kind of not really on a first name basis with the lady that was working the counter, but uh, you know, got to where we'd smile and wave at each other every time I went in the store and 
I went in there on Sunday. We had just picked up our trailer that we had parked behind the warehouse. And we were going to basically gas up, go by the store one last time to see if there was anything else that we just couldn't live without. And we pull into the gas station, and I go in the store, and the lady asked me um, if I knew Terry Miller. <laughs> I said, <laughs> and I, I said, yeah, I know Terry. And uh, she was like, do you know, could you get a hold of him? Because somebody left a check on the ATM that has his name on it and I don't know how to get it back to the right person. And it was a, it was a paycheck that Terry had written to one of the people that was filming with him. And, oh, wow. uh, and I forget who it was, but I texted Terry and I was like that the lady at the, at the gas station across from the warehouse, uh, has a check that you wrote to somebody that I guess was left on the ATM. And he, obviously he had a lot of questions about it. I was, I don't know. He was like, why did, why did she ask you about it? I was like, I mean, I came from the warehouse. I'm wearing all dynamic disc stuff. I guess she just took a stab in the dark. But uh, yeah. but uh, it's like every, everything in, in Emporia is connected like that. We were, uh, during the Team Trilogy uh, virtual meetup that we had the other night, I made the joke, Emporia, Kansas, where everything's one exit away. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah, you're eight minutes from everywhere. Yeah. It's a geographic oddity. <laughs> so, well, so how, uh, if, if you, I, I know you're having me on to ask me some questions, but I'm curious, how are things looking for, uh, your, your tournament at the end of the season? We will are definitely going to have a music city open. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. The, and I, uh, there's still a lot of tumblers that need to be rolled into place. Um, obviously I have to be careful. I, uh, what kind of detailed information I divulge because, sure. uh, I'm waiting for, you know, uh, Mike Downs asked me to give them some time for the board to make a vote on some things and for them to roll out a press release before I spill the beans from the Music City Open perspective because it just affects everything else. But yeah. um, things are obviously going to change. I know um, the, there are, they're looking at making some adjustments to the tour standards for the remaining events of the year. So there is still going to be some fluctuation to be seen with the remaining schedule. I can, I can say that with confidence, but yep. um, as long as something not foreseen up to this point doesn't happen, that just explicitly prohibits us from, from having the event, we will, we will be having it obviously. So we're going to plan it uh, to be, you know, implementing social distancing protocols, tea times, we're going to forego a lot of the ancillary activities, anything that's going to require people gathering in one spot. But, yep. um, you know, coupled with that, because I've always felt that that's a big part of the experience of a tournament that you kind of include in the value that you are presenting in, in exchange yep. for the entry fee. So um, we are going to be rolling back entry fees. So people that are registered for the event will be uh, getting the option of, you know, uh, receiving their partial refund and continuing to be registered for the event. Or if they need, you know, their money back, we, we are still in a place where we can give everybody a full refund and not, and not drown yep. because uh, thankfully, as Jay mentioned, you know, we hadn't yet gotten to this, the point where we started spending money on things and we opened up registration very, very early in the year. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, my, my plan is to try to get out there and, and take some of it in. So, um, looking forward to, to seeing that event. And, uh, uh, I played disc golf once in Nashville about 15, 18 years ago. Is there a course that has like a number and some trees after it? Like seven Oaks, <laughs> seven Oaks. Yep. That is where we played. Yeah. And, uh, Noemi and I were traveling through and, uh, uh, fun, fun course to play. But I hear the scene is really awesome there. And, well, I know you got Sean Sinclair right in your backyard, too, which uh, um, that's got to be nice having him there. Uh, we always appreciate uh, everything he does for our events, and I'm sure he's going to be be there in some form or fashion as a liaison from the PDGA during your event as well. Yeah, uh, his, his role with our event kind of – even exceeds the standard his standard role of involvement with you know the national tour events just because um yeah he's here and that's uh, given us a chance to become good friends and uh, you are most definitely correct i am grateful that he's in our backyard because he's been an incredible resource to me um uh, i've learned 
many, many things about running a large scale tournament that, uh, you know, and a lot of those things are lessons that you learn typically only by only the hard way. And by having him around to kind of uh, bounce things off of, it's saved me a lot of headache that in that regard. And, yep. um, but he's, I mean, for all intents and purposes, he is essentially music city open staff. He, uh, he's, yep. he's our lead designer for the courses that we use. And, um, you know, and it, We've already seen a lot of setbacks. We had our venue, Ravenwood, pulled out from underneath us right after we had signed the agreement with the PDGA to host the national tour finale. And uh, and he was there right alongside me to just kind of switch gears and, and find a new venue and, and start designing a new course. And we actually were able to get our first test event on the new course uh, pulled off before everything was shut down. And bef- this was before... Our local government had, you know, uh, issued a, a safer at home or shelter in place order of any kind. But we, um, I'm sure you remember Dr. Hoy, our financial officer. He's an infectious disease specialist. So that event, we ran it as a flex start. There were never, there was never a huge group at Tournament Central. Yeah, um, we were able to do the entry and the payout all online, and we had some really, really good feedback from uh, from everybody that played it. Uh, in terms of yep. just the design of the course and how it played, we played the FPO layout and Todd Lyon was able to give us a bunch of data on uh, stroke averages and par averages and stuff on the field. And so, um, yep. but you know, you know, thing, things change. We're going to just have to continue to roll with the punches. And uh, I mean, I think so far in all the conversations that I've had with, with Mike Downs and with Steve-O and with Sean and with everybody involved, it, uh, the sentiment is the same. There's a consensus that, you know, all of this is really going to do is make 2021 even more awesome. And the level of yep. excitement is just going to go through the roof. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. No, it's, it's, it's exciting. And, uh, I'm, I'm excited for you guys and for the Nashville area. I think uh, it's going to be fantastic. When we heard that you guys were the, the NT finale, we, we were, that we thought that was super, super cool. Yeah, it definitely is super cool, and it's a huge opportunity for us. It's what it's what we've been working toward for a long time. You know, yep. as you said, like we do have a really really strong disc golf community and scene here in Nashville, and um, we've always everybody's always felt pretty unanimously that uh, we deserve to have a moment on the big stage and uh, for everybody to see how great the disc golf is here. And uh, yep. Really looking forward to it. It might, I have a feeling it's probably not going to look uh, much the way we anticipated or hoped that it would when we set out planning this year. Um, yep. But, you know, uh, everybody's feeling it, man. And, and I think that that's, you know, the uh, the opportunity, the ability to do stuff like this, have this kind of a long longer form conversation and the ability to have, you know, the Oakleys and AJ and, uh, and Paige and everybody doing so much live interactive content over the last week. I think that's really pointing out a big, a big piece of the puzzle that I think everybody needs to remain cognizant of. And I'm kind of the people here in Nashville probably think I'm beating a dead horse, but you know, it's like everybody is really raw right now. And in, in addition to being pent up at the house and all that, it seems like a lot of people are just having a really, a really bad run of luck lately and and then not being able to gather around the people that you care about it makes it even that much harder and all of this you know interactive content it it gives us an excuse to come together and and remind each other that we're all dealing with it you know it's it's counterproductive for us to kind of be hostile and argumentative and uh, judgmental of of whatever what each other are going through because we're all yep. sitting in this and having to deal with it. And anytime there's a way that we can all be reminded that we're, we're family still, and we're going to come back from this. And, you know, that's all that, that's the stuff that makes disc golf worth fighting for. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, you talk about silver linings. I, I think, I think there is going to be a big increase in PDGA members over the next two years because of everybody that has said, you know what, let's go grab some Frisbees and go throw at those baskets in that park. I mean, that's one of the things that we have seen where it's just people that 
I've never seen on the courses or on the courses in Emporia. And it's because what else are you going to do? And for the longest time, the CDC, the World Health Organization was saying, hey, stay in your house or go out and do something with your family. Go outside, go outside and uh, uh, disc golf just by, I mean, if you do it right, the social distancing is all absolutely, you know, you can you can make that happen, um, you know, and it's uh, I, I think you're going to see, you know, I I think that probably one out of every 10 to 20 casual players gets that bug where they want to go play tournaments and they want to get deeper and deeper into disc golf. And I, I think one of the silver linings in this is going to be that we're going to see more people playing because so many people, at least from what we can tell, not just from the eye test, but also from just the number of, I'll give you an example, starter sets. Yeah. We, I mean, the starter sets on Amazon, we can't keep them in stock and it's just people want to go grab three discs and go try it and and as you know you and i both went out and tried it once and uh we're sitting here on a podcast talking about it now so i mean yeah. it's it's it will grow the sport will grow because of this yeah absolutely and we're seeing the same thing here i know um about two weeks into me being home from work uh i got a, a text message from a buddy of mine from high school that i hadn't talked to in years and i went to high school in new mexico and uh and he got to, he was, he was just kind of pleasantry, small talk back and forth. And then he was like, so I see that you're quite the disc golf aficionado these days. And I was like, well, yeah, that's a very kind way to put it. And he said, uh, he was like, well, um, tell, tell me what I got to do to get started. And it was just the most surreal experience. We got into the conversation. It turns out he's in Southern Illinois, which I mean, basically like halfway or close to halfway between here and Emporia. And uh, you got to tell him, you know, hey, I would recommend this starter set from Dynamic Discs. And if you look at getting your own basket, and I was able to help him find a course to go play at and uh, recommend some videos, some of Danny's videos for him to watch. Yep. And, uh, and that was really cool. And, and just more recently, um, we have a course here just to the south of us called Crockett Park in a, town, in a neighborhood called Brentwood. And it's where I really learned to play when I've first came back I, I spent a week in Arizona and came back with the bug and I bought discs and started going out to Crockett Park because it was really undercrowded there wasn't ever a whole lot of people playing out there it was a good place to go and throw your whole bag and lose your discs and go look for them and not be holding anybody up and and there a lot of the locals uh, live close to there and they kind of took me under their wing and all that and I've always held you know, the city of Brentwood doesn't allow anybody to play for money there. And they kind of stood in the way of us putting permanent construction, like concrete tee pads there for a long time and stuff. And uh, I've always said, you know, that's a really good place to go and practice, like work in a new disc or uh, something like that, just because you're not under any pressure to keep a, a certain kind of pace. And I was telling somebody that recently in a Facebook thread and uh, everybody immediately corrected me and said, no, I've been out there multiple times in the last couple of weeks and there's been a group on just about every hole and it's parents with their kids. It's uh, all like a group of high school kids where it looks like maybe one of them has like a, a, a more in-depth setup with like as far as a backpack bag and a full selection of discs, but their buddies are all carrying a couple discs here and there. So it's by all accounts, it has the it, the look and feel of a lot of new people picking up the sport, like you said, yep. because it's just, it's one of the few things that you can do outside and get some exercise right now. Yep. Yeah. And you, you don't go, well, you can go broke, but not as quick as you go broke with your set of irons and woods and chasing those little white balls around. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, to get started, it's much more affordable, but yep. you look in the long term, the big picture, I think I saw somebody was talking about it. I thought like it was like a meme or something. Somebody had posted like a garage full of discs. Like I thought this boat was the sport was supposed to be affordable. <laughs> it can be affordable. Yes, it can. <laughs> um, but. yeah. So there was, I think something else I wanted to ask you about and now it's slipping my mind, but, uh, we we're pushing an hour and I don't want to take up a whole bunch of your time. Um, I really appreciate you, taken the last hour to sit down and talk to us on our little podcast this is uh it's a treat for us to finally get you on the show yeah hey no anytime you just let me know and i'd be i'd be more than happy to do again i i appreciate what you're doing i think that um every single person that 
makes the effort to do something for disc golf off the course. Now, we need to do a lot of work on the course, too, but uh, it, it warms my heart to see people growing the sport through podcasts, through special pages, through, you know, just social media is filled with disc golf. And I think that is one of the reasons why we're on a trajectory that we're on. So thank you, Will, for everything you're doing. And uh, you did pique my interest a little bit. Where in New Mexico were you? I went to high school in a little town called Belen, about 45 minutes south of Albuquerque. Um, okay. And then I lived in Albuquerque for a few years. Also. But never never as a disc golfer? No, I never have made it back to New Mexico to play disc golf. And it, and it grinds my gears to no end because now that I'm in the know, I have awareness and knowledge of some really epic courses in New Mexico. Um Places like Lions Wilderness and Tucumcari come to mind, and uh, yep. and now they they have a, a course at I think it's called Roosevelt Park, um, right downtown, like right in between Lead and Coal. It's like this park that you used to go and hang, like cut school at, and hope you didn't get shot at. And now they've got a disc golf course there, and I haven't yep. even been back to see it yet. But I've I've played Roosevelt Park several times. We used to drive through there all the time uh, from Denver down to. Uh, my oldest daughter was in um, uh, El Paso for a little while, yeah. and so we, we made that drive several times. Uh, yeah, if you ever get a chance, Sipapu, which is near Taos, has just an amazing course. Uh, oh, God. New Mexico is is an untapped, you know, the, the disc golf in New Mexico is solid, some really good stuff. So I'd encourage you to try to get back there and play at some point. I used to spend quite a bit of time in the Taos area, in Angel Fire, and up there, I mean, yep. it, beautiful area and just a really neat community and i'm sure that now there's tons of awesome disc golf there that would only that would only yep. make sense <laughs> well, gonna... McCabe, McCabe just uh, designed a championship level course in uh, rio doso which uh oh yeah is a is a nice place too so I'm gonna have to make another trip at some point in the somewhat near future yep so well anyways uh hey i uh uh you know i think one of the greatest disappointments of having the GBO canceled. And then I know uh, I probably got to get off of here was, uh, um, uh, expecting a, a couple bottles of something from uh, your neck of the woods. And I guess we'll have to put those off for, for until next year or something, but uh, no. it'll be as good next year as it would have been this year. We're going to work that out, Doug. I had, uh, I had completely, that was one of the things that had fallen completely off my radar was that we were bringing that yes. with us. D uh, Dr. Hoy still got it at his house. We'll, we'll figure out a way to get that to you. Most yeah, certainly. No, that, that was, uh, that's one, one of the things I, uh, as being, a, a you know, one of my vices is, uh, good, good whiskey, good bourbon, especially American whiskey and American bourbon. And, uh, well, all it's, it's, it's all going to be American in that case, but, uh, you are right there in the hotbed of, uh, of a lot of good spirits and, uh, not so much in Emporia, Kansas. <laughs> That's what I've heard. Tony Cisco is griping all the time on Facebook about how there's no decent craft beer anywhere. Um, yeah, well, Radius has good stuff, and you know, but it's not as clearly. It's not yeah. quite as quite as robust as in some other areas. So, uh, well, I'll tell uh, you anyway. what, man. Next time J Ray or Tyler is making a, a trip to the motherland, I will. I'll make them detour and I'll throw a box on their on their RV. Well, hey. It it, it 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 whenever is fine, and uh, even if it never happens, it's uh, it's the, the 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 thought was awesome. And when you guys reached out and said, "Hey, we can find some of that," for your listeners that don't know, it was the the whiskey advocates number one whiskey of the year last year was was a relatively inexpensive um, bottle of a uh, bottled in uh, bottled in bond um, uh, Dickel which uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to try it, but it is really, really good. We need to do a, a, a podcast that's disc golf and whiskey. You know what? You might be onto a million dollar idea there, sir. And uh, talk, talk discs, talk tournaments, talk golfers, maybe even get, get some uh, touring pros to taste a few things and give us their feedback. And uh, I'm telling you, let's get that thought going. I already have a name for that podcast and it's uh, something that, came about very organically between me and Tyler and our friend James. We'll call it to the gentleman. I'm all about that. It'll make me start having to act like a gentleman though. That's the problem. 
No, it's just for uh, presentation purposes. You know, got to keep it all nice and polished on the surface, and then let the shenanigans begin once we get them hooked in. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, yeah, Doug. Uh, I know it's it, it's probably getting late for you, and uh, thanks again for taking the time. And uh, we will definitely talk more off the air about a couple things because I, I want to get you in the loop on some stuff too. So. Sounds good. Hey, we'll talk to you soon, Will. Thanks, Doug. Okay. Bye. See you, everybody. Let the bass kick.